What's up guys, it's Beautiful Flex and I'm gonna explain black genetics. Quick disclaimer, this video is not intended to offend anybody. I don't wanna discriminate, I only wanna educate. If you play sports before, it's likely you've heard of the term black genetics. Black people are seen to be genetically gifted or to have a genetic advantage in powerful sports. I mean, they do seem to dominate a lot of powerful sports like sprinting, basketball, American football, and to some extent, bodybuilding. So, is it true? Do black people have a genetic advantage? Well, in short, yes. For example, if you look at sprinting, the first person to break the 10 second barrier was in 1968 and that was Jim Hines, a black guy. Until 2003, only black people had broken the 10 second barrier. Now in 2003, it was the first person that wasn't of African descent that broke the 10 second barrier and that was Patrick Johnson, an Aboriginal from Australia. Now. Whether, whether you view Aboriginals as black or not, that's up to you. Anyway, after 2003 until 2010, only black people were breaking the 10 second barrier. When it comes to basketball, over 70% of the NBA is black. Now, of course, yes, there's a height aspect, but let's be honest. On average, black people are not the tallest people in the world. So, of course, it's more about their athletic ability the explosive ability. Let's look at American football, which is an extremely explosive sport. Over 70% of the NFL is black. When it comes to bodybuilding, the top two bodybuilders in history with eight Mr. Olympia titles are Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman, both black. Now the runners up, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Phil Heath. Phil Heath, yet again, is another black guy. And his competitor for a long time was Kai Green, which is yet again, another black guy. However, when it comes to bodybuilding, it is arguable. Now there's four main reasons and one factor as well. Now this factor is the genetic diversity in Africa. You see, Sub-Saharan Africans are grouped as black people and part of the black race, even though Africa is the most genetically diverse continent in the world. There's only 1.2 billion people in Africa, but they're still more genetically diverse than the six plus billion people in the rest of the world. So of course, you're likely to find a lot of the genetic extremes in Africa. For example, the tallest people in the world are the Dinka people in South Sudan, which is in Africa. The shortest people in the world are the Mbutsi people in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is also in Africa. So it's no surprise then that the fastest and most muscular people are also gonna be found in Africa. But understand this, just because they're all grouped as black doesn't mean they have the same DNA. For example, a man from South India does not have the same DNA as a man from Korea, but they're both Asian. It doesn't mean they have the same DNA. In the same way, black people don't all have the same DNA, even though we're all grouped as black people. That's why it's easy to see that black people dominate sports. But in true reality, there's a lot of different DNA groups that dominate different sports. Now, as for the four reasons, the first reason is natural selection. If you don't know what natural selection is, maybe you didn't pay attention in biology, but basically natural selection is when the environment decides what genes survive. For example, you get two rabbits. One rabbit is fast and the other rabbit is slow. Now, if both rabbits are being chased by a wolf or a fox, the fast rabbit is more likely to survive because it's faster. So over time, the fast rabbit is probably gonna live longer and be able to pass on its genes, while the slow rabbit won't be able to. So as time goes on, there'll be more faster rabbits than there are slow rabbits because the environment decides. It's just science. Now in Africa, malaria has killed off so many people, especially in West Africa. And in case you don't know what malaria is, mosquitoes suck blood from humans and animals, mainly animals, but they also do suck blood from humans. And what they do is they suck your blood, but in the process of doing so, they inject their bacteria, which is responsible for malaria. Now this bacteria likes to infect the red blood cells and then multiply. Now in West Africa, they have on average lower hemoglobin and also they have the highest cases of sickle cell. That's sickle cell trait and sickle cell anemia. Now, low hemoglobin and sickle cell means you have a problem in your production of red blood cells, which normally is a health problem. But in the case of malaria, it's actually an advantage 
because there's not enough red blood cells for the malaria to spread throughout the body. So those without those traits likely died out, whereas those with those traits have lived on and passed on their genes. See, natural selection. Now, as a result of low hemoglobin and sickle cell trait causing the low production of red blood cells, black people have less slow twitch muscle fibers. In case you don't know, slow twitch muscle fibers are oxidative. They use aerobic respiration, meaning that they use oxygen. Now, because there's a low percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers, there's a higher percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers, which don't require oxygen. Now, the second reason is the power gene. That's right. Our body literally has a gene that helps us to generate power and force. Now, this gene is called ACTN3, and the gene creates a protein called alpha actinin 3. Now, this protein is what's actually responsible for the power and the force. However, ACTN3 has two versions, a good version and a bad version. The good version is the R allele and the bad version is the X allele. Basically, if you get the R allele from your dad and another R allele from your mum, and you become the RR genotype, you'll be able to create a lot of power and force. If you get the R from your dad and the X from your mum, you'll still be able to produce a good amount of power. Not as good as the RR, but still a good amount of power. On the other hand, if you receive the X from your dad and the X from your mum, you will not be able to produce as much power because your gene is insufficient in creating actin and 3. Now, the XX genotype, people who are XX, not RX, but just XX, completely the insufficient version of the gene, make up around 25% of the Asian population. That means that a quarter of Asians have the XX version, right? Which is not the good version. Now, when it comes to white people, it is 18% of white people. That's almost a fifth have the bad version, the XX version. However, when it comes to black people, less than 1% of black people have the bad version, the XX version. That's 3% of black Americans, 2% of Jamaicans. And in West Africa, the percentage of people with the bad version of the gene is around 1%. That means that around 99% of West Africans have the good version of the gene. And just to explain how important this gene is, with elite athletes, with speed and power and strength, not a single one of those athletes don't have the good version of the gene. Now, reason number three is myostatin. Myostatin is a hormone that stops your muscles from getting too big. It's not an ally. In fact, it's an enemy of building muscle. Now, Sub-Saharan Africans have a higher percentage of myostatin mutations. This means that they're not as limited when it comes to building muscle. Now, the fourth reason is androgen receptors. Without androgen receptors, your muscles won't grow, right? They're literally the limit of growing muscles. Now, black people have a higher androgen receptor sensitivity. This is also why black people are at higher risk of prostate cancer because of their androgen receptor sensitivity. So it's not so good when it comes to prostate cancer, but when it comes to muscle, it seems to be an advantage. That's it. I hope you learned something and I hope you were informed. Remember, these genetics are not exclusive to West Africans. However, there's a higher concentration of people who have these genetics that are West Africans and their descendants. But there are plenty of people that aren't West African or West African descendants or African descendants, full stop, that have been able to make amazing fitness feats. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the faces of bodybuilding, is a white guy. Same with Christoph Lemaitre, who was the first white man to break the 10 second barrier. Su Bingtian, a Chinese sprinter. Apologies if I pronounced the name wrong. But he was the first Asian born sprinter to break the 10 second barrier. So, Yes, there's a high concentration of West African descendants with these genetics, but there are, of course, other people who have these good genetics. Now, whether or not you have these genetics, whether or not you're a West African or whether or not you're an Asian with these genetics or so forth, it doesn't matter. With hard work, consistency and patience, you can see amazing results, even if you have, quote, bad genetics. Just stick to a good workout program, 
Make sure you have good nutrition and prioritize sleep. So push yourself to become the best version of you. Only you can be the best version of you. Don't be the best version of the black people, Asians, white people. No, be the best version of you. If you like this video, check out the video below about genetics. Also, check out Team 3D Alpha, who goes further in depth when it comes to black genetics. Like, share and comment on this video. Subscribe to my channel. It's Beautiful Flex and I'm out.